y'all, welcome back. I hope this video finds you well. We are going to uh, hop into chapter 11, and the first section is about compound events. Now, a compound event is a combination of two or more simple events occurring together, or one right after another. So, like, flipping a coin and rolling a die. Those are two separate events that are happening. Or maybe you picking out a shirt and picking out a pair of pants. That's kind of the compound event. Two separate events kind of coming together or happening one right after another. Okay? So the first thing, we want to be able to identify if something is a compound event. So part A says, getting a number less than 2 or greater than 4 when spinning a spinner. Now again, compound event means two events are happening. There are three possibilities for my answer, but there's not two events happening. We're only spinning the spinner once. So this would not be a compound event or false. Okay. Part B says getting a number less than two or greater than four when spinning a spinner twice in a row. And again, that's our key right there. We again, we have more than one option to get, but the fact that we're spinning the spinner twice in a row is what makes this true. Okay, it is in fact a compound event. So getting a heads and a three when a coin and six sided number die are tossed. Again, we have two events. We're getting a head on some sort of coin and a three when we're rolling a die, okay? So again, this is still a compound event, so this would in fact be true because there's two events happening. And it can be more than two events, but at least two, okay? So if we were to sit here and flip a coin and roll a die, we want to think about all the possible outcomes. So I could roll a one with heads, which I have written here, and we'll call that one H, and I could roll a one with tails, and that would be one T. Now I could roll a 2 with heads, which I could call a 2H. I could roll a 2 with tails and call that 2T. I could roll a 3 with heads and a 3 with tails and call that 3H and 3T. Again, feel free to pause this video anytime to keep writing with me. We could have a 4 with heads and a 4 with tails and we'll call that 4H and 4T. So think just for a second what would be our last two or last four sets, okay? Pause the video and fill it in and come back and see if you have the right answer. So I could have a five with heads and a five with tails and call that 5H and 5T. Oop, that five is janky. Okay, and then we could have a six with heads and a six with tails and call that 6H and 6T. So these are all of our possible outcomes for a compound event. So this is charting it. This helps us just to organize our information and make sure we understand what's happening. So this right here, the bottom row, these are all the possible outcomes I could have from rolling a coin, rolling a coin, rolling a die and flipping a coin, okay? So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 total outcomes. And we've talked about that before with our probability. So the outcomes are very important with compound events. Another way to figure out all the possible outcomes is to have what we call a tree diagram, okay? Uh, so we can put it in a chart. Sometimes that's helpful. Sometimes it's more helpful to have it in a tree diagram. So we want to find all the possible outcomes of tossing a coin twice, okay? So in the first toss, my options are heads or tails. So notice one row here was my first toss. Now my second toss, so if I toss a head the first time, my second toss could also be a head or a tail. If the first time I toss a tail, I could have a head or a tail the next time because nothing changes about the probability of getting a head or tail. Okay, so notice again here, toss number two was all the options in this one. Okay, so we went from our first toss and said, okay, what's possible after that? If this was the actual toss, what would be the possibilities after that? So then I could write down all these possibilities. I could have two heads right in a row. I could have a head and a tail. Or I could have a tail and then a head. Whoops. Or two tails. So there was four possible outcomes for tossing a coin twice. Okay? So again, all I did here was I... Let me pick a different color here. I combined this and this for these two options. And this and this for my second two options. So a tree diagram can really help you organize that information, just like our little chart did here, okay? 
But a lot of times when it's two events that are exactly the same, a tree diagram is really helpful so you don't confuse yourself and think, oh, I already have a head, don't worry about it. But when there's two separate events like a die and a coin, a chart can help just as well. But you can still use a tree diagram. Okay, let's go ahead and try this other one. So Eric has a yellow, green, and pink highlighter. I'm going to highlight that information to choose from. He can also either use a red or black pen. If Eric randomly chooses a pen and a highlighter to write with in class, what are all the possible outcomes he can have? So again, I'm, we're going to try a tree diagram because there's two separate kind of options. We're picking a highlighter and we're picking a pen. So if my first choice is highlighter, I'm going to pick my highlighter first. Okay. There are three options. So I'm going to make three branches of my tree. So I would have yellow, pink, and green to choose from. All good highlighter colors. So I'm going to choose one of them eventually, but I'm trying to figure out all my possible outcomes. Now if I pick a yellow highlighter, I could pick a red pen or a black pen. If I choose the pink highlighter, I could choose a red pen or a black pen still. And if I chose the green highlighter, I could pick a red and a black pen. Okay. Now again, if I want to write all the possible outcomes, the tree diagram just kind of helps me decide that. So I could have a yellow highlighter with a red pen, a yellow highlighter with a black pen. I could have a pink highlighter with a red pen, or a pink highlighter with a black pen. I could have a green highlighter with a red pen, and a green highlighter with a black pen. Now again, I'm shortening these. If you want to write out the full wordage, that's fine. But I have six different options in class, so 